Hello, everyone, and welcome to another webinar for the Braille Young Learners and Teenagers Week. We're very excited to have Lucia with us today. Um, and tell us more, Tiago, what do you have for us? Hey, hello, everyone. Hi, Lucia. We're really Hi. happy to have you here. Hi. So I'm going to introduce our speaker. Uh, Lucia holds an MA in Applied Linguistics from PUC São Paulo and a bachelor degree in Letras from USP, as, from USP. And she has worked for around 20 years at Seven Idiomas. At the moment, she's an owner of two schools uh, of the Seven Franchises Group. She's a Google educator. She also works for the central office at Seven as the head of the academic department. She is responsible for the leadership of pedagogical coordinators, administrative assistants, and commercial leaders at Seven branches as well as the development of new courses for their in-house students, mainstream school students, and for in company uh, courses. Lucy, I don't know how you can do it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a huge job. <laughs> it is, no, right? Why sleeping? Sorry? Yeah. Why sleeping? Yeah, who needs eight hours of sleep? Yeah, right? I always tell them when people have, have come to me and said, Oh, would you like to do this? I say, Oh, I, I do nothing from midnight to 6 a.m. So, <laughs> so that's okay, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, so Lucy is going to to talk about technology and uh, the role of uh, of technology in the ELT class for teens. So Lucia, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for uh, creating this very nice event. Uh, teenagers are most of the students we have are teenagers. Uh, even though Seven uh, used to be a school dedicated mostly to, um, let me share here my my screen just a second. Um, okay, now it's all right. Okay, um, so uh, Seven Idiomas was created to deal mostly with adults in the past, but. Uh, uh, now we have like 60% of our students are teenagers and um, throughout the years we've been facing the, the, the challenges of the technology which is coming and all the time you have something new, you have something uh, to learn and we have the impression that teenagers are so much more uh, connected to technology and will never be able to cope with that. That's why I decided to uh, uh, work on this talk uh, so we could um, perhaps discuss a little bit the, um, some solutions, some ways to deal with this challenge. So uh, technology is everywhere. Technology is part of our lives. Uh, we are connected to the cell phones all the time. We are connected to WhatsApp and instant messages. And uh, uh, if that's so true for us, let alone to teenagers, even young learners. And the point is, um, our teen students, they establish different relationship formats and uh, they connect to the, the, the to internet and to their peers and friends and uh, uh, relatives using internet. So their relationship formats are completely different from the relationship formats that we used to have. And uh, it's so funny because it seems that their interests and their expectations are absolutely different from the ones that we used to have. Uh, when, I, when I remember, when I picture myself as a teenager, I remember going to parties and uh, hanging around with friends in front of the school or in a friend's house. And now it's a completely different ball game. 
uh, they, they, they can connect to each other using their cell phones. Sometimes they are close together. You have these five or six teenagers and they're talking over the phone and they are like shoulder to shoulder. And this is something that troubles us teachers. Um, you see, I, 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 I picture that as if we're dealing with a different mindset. It's like uh, looking at the world with, with different glasses. So the way that they look at technology and the way that they look at relationships, the way that they look at communication is totally different from the way that we do. And uh, the question that might come to our minds is, am I getting old fashioned? We have this comics here and where you have this boy holding a book and saying, how do you turn this thing on? Um, I've, I've been part of many discussions that we talk about the future of books, uh, the future of magazines, the future of newspaper, and the future of education, the future of the role of teachers, and uh, since we are in the middle of this hurricane, this question of being old fashioned, are my classes old fashioned? Is the way that we teach old fashioned? Is the methodology that we are using in our classes old fashioned? It's so interesting. Uh, here at Seven Idiomas, we've been discussing for some time already, what is it that we have to change and adapt and include so that we don't get old fashioned. Because uh, teenagers only learn if you find a way to engage them. And uh, the other day I attended a, a lecture. It was not connected to ELT, but uh, um, the, the speaker was talking about this division between digital immigrants and digital natives. Uh, she would say that people like me, like in the 40s or people in the 50s, or even uh, uh, adults in the 30s, they are digital immigrants. So we, yes, we use web technologies, but we kind of adapt to this and adapt to the way that we use to relate to technology. But we prefer to talk in person. And uh, we are very logical. So we like systems and order. We usually do one thing at a time. And we prefer to have interaction with one or few people rather than 100 people at the same time. And uh, normally, the way that we look at internet is to get uh, uh, news or information in a quite traditional way. Now, digital natives, they are completely different. They are the ones who were born during the digital age or after the beginning of the digital age. And they are the ones who are always attached to a phone or to an iPad. Uh, uh, once I, I heard a doctor saying that uh, uh, in the future, our kids are going to have many back problems because they tend to keep looking down all the time. But you see, instead of being logical learners, they are intuitive learners. So they, they operate their learning in a different way. And compared to us who like doing things once at a time, you start one, you finish, and then you start another, and then you finish. They are multitask. So they do five things at the same time. And they change from one task to the other at a second. And they do that with some uh, uh, proficiency, but sometimes they, they, they lose quality because they are doing too many things at once. They are extremely social, so this is a very good point. And they surely are multimedia oriented. You see, considering this, and then we look at ourselves as teachers, the question that 
once in a while comes to our minds is, what should I do now? Should I include technology in each and every one of my classes? Should I include my technology in order to bring motivation back? Am I going to lose motivation if I don't have technology? What kind of technology is the technology that they want and the technology that I can cope with? Um, you see, as English teachers, we're always taking courses on reading, on speaking activities, on how to deal with grammar, how to work with grammar uh, in a contextualized way. And now I see many teachers working with courses and taking courses on technology, on educational technology, on what to do with technology within our classes. But before we go on with this, I'd like to work on some misconceptions. Well, yes, they are very proficient in terms of the use of technology. Let's have a look at what they do know. Yes, they connect, they comment, and they discuss things with each other. They use social networking all the time and much better than I would do. They email. Actually, they don't email so much. I guess that the, the, the immigrants email more. They prefer online messaging. This is all the time. They record their voices. They take pictures. They send GIFs. They send uh, uh, memes. Uh, well, they do know how to find, how to create, how to change interesting photos, how to make the photos funnier, how to make the photos more beautiful. They know how to produce videos and they write things and they put on their blogs. Yes, they join interest groups, they follow the groups they want, they, they, they find the groups that they want to follow. Well, of course, they play online games all the time. Uh, sometimes I, I have a 12 year old son and it's nightmare to look at his cell phone. He has like a hundred games on the cell phone. I don't know how he doesn't get lost in the middle of so many apps. Something which is absolutely fantastic about teenagers is that they learn a lot using tutorials. The other day, my son again was learning how to put a wood stick inside a balloon without blowing up the balloon. And then, of course, he had to use oil. And of course, that he used the vinegar, the most expensive vinegar that I had. I mean, the olive oil, the most expensive olive oil that I had in the house, because he wanted to do what the tutorial was teaching him how to do. So they learn everything they want to using tutorials. And of course, they use uh, a lot of knowledge and information on the web as a study tool for school. But I'd say I put this one as the last one because I guess that the other ones like connection, videos, interest groups, games and tutorials are much more part of their everyday lives. So yes, they do know a lot about these things and we get some kind of lost if we want to do this or if we want to connect through these things. But you see, there are many, many items connected to technology that teenagers do not know. For example, um, if you ask them to search on Google or any other search uh, tool, Okay, yes, they go there and they write what they want to search. But when they need to make more complex searches, like when you have to find something that has two items at the same time in an article or in a piece of information, they don't know how to do that. Yes, they can produce many videos, but when it comes to PowerPoint presentations, they do get quite lost. They mess up the presentations. They put the pictures there, but they don't look good. They have difficulties using hyperlinks. It's quite funny to notice that. I'm not saying that it's absolutely all the teenagers, but if you uh, start 
talking to them and asking them to include a hyperlink and hide this hyperlink on an image or in a click a key or something like that, they do get lost. Something that I've noticed as well is that when they have to share files or create collaborative uh, uh, files like docs or PowerPoint or uh, uh, sheets and so on and so forth, they also get lost. They don't know how to get the link and just share using the link. They tend to send the file. And they are not very good at picking up good quality images. They really don't know how to search the images and check the number of pixels or the size of the picture. They just notice that the quality of the image is not good when they put it on doc or PowerPoint and then they open the picture and they see that the quality is bad. And something else, which is something that they should do because this is absolutely important, is that they have difficulties separating Facebook friends into groups inside Facebook. They tend to accept everybody. So everybody who asks for friendship, they say yes, 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 and they don't separate these people into groups, like a group for the family, a group for closest friends, a group for not general friends, a group for a volunteer work that this teenager uh, performs and all the people that, that is engaged in this kind of thing. And this should be absolutely important for teenagers because if, for example, you have this girl and she's on the beach and she's taking photos at the beach, perhaps she doesn't want to send this to everybody only to the closest friends. But if she doesn't have separate groups, she won't be able to do that. Well, we know that, of course, they are not so worried about this privacy as um, people my age would be. But then again, if they are, they have difficulties because mostly they don't have uh, these groups separated on Facebook. Something else that they do not know is how to avoid cyberbullying. And this is absolutely important that they do know. They have difficulties to de detect fake news and get rid of them, like gossip or even uh, uh, untrue information. And this is quite interesting. As if, if you notice, the previous uh, slide, I pointed out some technical items that teenagers do not know about technology. Here, I'm pointing out more uh, behavior aspects. But you see, they are all connected to technology. Yes, they have difficulties to avoid isolation. It's quite common for parents or teachers or older friends to have to go and say, hello, there is life out of, out of the internet. There is life out of web. And also they have difficulties to avoid excessive exposure. This is what I was telling you about people on the beach or a teenager uh, uh, drinking. Uh, drinking a beer, do you have to post everything? They have, they have a tendency to, to, to not to worry about privacy. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's okay. It doesn't mean that they have to do as we would. People my age, for example, we are extremely worried about privacy. They will never be like us. But then again, we, that there's a little of thinking about it, being critical about it, exposure. Another difficulty that they have is dealing with the huge number of connections and the enormous amount of information on the web. They really get lost. When you ask them to search for whatever topic, it's very common that they start searching and one hour later they are in some other part of the planet, completely searching on a topic that had nothing to do with what they had in mind at the beginning.
So this is a behavior that is connected to technology that they also lack how to do. And finally, they have difficulties to control the number of hours online. Um, I've read some other day that we have some teenagers that spend like 10 hours online every day, 12 hours online every day. And I was so curious because I, I asked, oh, and what about myself? How many hours a, a day I stay online? And then I noticed that I had this app on my telephone, um, which would count the number of hours that I open Facebook or I am on the WhatsApp or in the Chrome, Safari or whatever items on the web. And only using the cell phone, I was amazed. I spent four hours a day. So I'm not counting the time I spend in front of the computer itself. But if I spend like four hours only with the smartphone, I imagine teenagers, yes, probably they spend like eight to 12 hours a day. So controlling over this number of hours is also something that they have to learn. So you see, considering this, perhaps the first thing we have to do as educators is not being afraid. Because yes, they do know about uh, much more than we do about technology on certain aspects of technology. But there are many other things, even connected to uh, a technology, that perhaps we still know more and we still can help them and create information gap. So we create a learning opportunity. It might be surprising. And um, having that in mind, the question that we started asking here at Seven Idiomas with our uh, director of studies, our pedagogical coordinators, teachers, and so on and so forth, is, OK, they like the technology. But what is it that they enjoy the most? I guess that this question came to us as a more concrete question to that previous one, which was, do I have to include the technology in each and every one of my classes now? OK, and then th there is this uh, pedagogical coordinator at Seven São Caetano. Her name is Denise Cavalli. Uh, she's one of our teacher trainers at Seven Idiomas. She did a wonderful job uh, visiting all the teen classes at her school in the end of the class, for example, to have a chat with them and asking what is it that they liked the most about our classes? Or what is it that they wanted to have more? And we were surprised because yes, games like apps and games on the computer, on the iPad, on the tablet. Yes, they came up as something that they enjoy. But kinesthetic games as well. Games where they have to run and go and find and sit on the floor and separate and create, like word hunt, treasure hunt. They like games like taboo, mining games, Tic-tac-toe, there's nothing more traditional than tic-tac-toe, hangman, breaking the cold game, hot potato, rally race. They even mention games like that they have to run and sit and blow up a balloon. And we were really amazed to see this result. So yes, they can enjoy what they are learning, if we bring apps, if we bring games that come on the computer or they are on the internet, on the web, on, on the iPad. Yes, we cannot exclude that. But it has to be enjoyable. 
If it is to be using technology, it's the kind of technology which will make them feel engaged, feel that they're having fun, feel that they're relaxing, that they are learning in a nice and ludic way. If it's not possible to happen through technology, maybe here I have this drawing of a treasure hunt map. This is so welcome. They just love it because, again, they are learning and they are enjoying themselves. Perhaps they can have this fun and this sense of enjoyment doing things. Now we have this uh, uh, new trend of maker spaces and uh, maker activities. But you see, they are not so new. Like in the past, we already have building blocks, planks, Legos. Legos are, you know, the kind of toys that I used to play when I was little. And they, yes, they have a, a lot of fun if they can work and use this maker attitude to learn English. Yes, now we have this STEAM thing that they can learn English and they, they, they learn a lot of English if through content. Content connected to science, to technology, to engineering and arts and maths. Yes, they have fun if they are working on a project that has a final product and uh, this project uh, embraces collaboration. Yes, they have a lot of fun and they enjoy and then they learn because they are enjoying themselves. So what I'd like to ask you now is, is this learn and enjoy correct. What we've been noticing is that actually it's the other way around. We they enjoy to learn. It's the sense of engagement and fun and enjoyment that gives us the way to have learning take place. If they enjoy themselves using technology, then yes, technology might be a tool to help them learn. But they have fun in different ways. What we are, the conclusion we are sort of getting to here with our uh, pedagogical uh, staff is that it all summarizes to experience. It is the kind of experience that we offer teenagers that will enable them to learn English. Actually, it's the experience that will enable them to learn anything. Science, Portuguese, history. And this is the biggest challenge for ELT teachers because technology is just another part of experience. We may have experience through technology, through games, through making, through projects. We, and we have to bring diversity to class. So if one day, perhaps you're working with technology to create this experience, the other day, take them to the school kitchen and have them work on a cooking class. The other day, have an outing that you take your students to the drugstore and they are going to work on vocabulary of the things that you buy at a drugstore. So what we have to keep in mind, perhaps, is that experience is what matters. Technology might be a way to have this experience. So yes, we have to bring technology to class, but actually we bring technology to bring fun, to bring experience, and to bring the sense of enjoyment to our classes. I thank you very much for your attention, 
here you have my email. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. My, my full name on LinkedIn is Lucia Rodriguez Alves, the same for Facebook. So if you want to keep having this chat and exchanging ideas, I'm really open uh, uh, to everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lucia. Thank you very much. Um, everyone here watching is, uh, is really happy. Lots of food for thought. And uh, we have some questions from the audience. So let me uh, see here. Um, it's about the, the visit. You mentioned the coordinator going to the classrooms and everything. Was the teacher present? And if so, do you think that may have uh, prevented students from being completely honest? Um, when she visited the, the groups at uh, Seven Son Caetano, sometimes uh, the teacher stays in the school, uh, in, the, in the classroom. It's no problem because it's not, this, it's not an evaluation of the teacher. It's an evaluation of what is it that the students want to have more in the course. So it really doesn't make any difference for us. Sometimes the teacher just leaves the classroom because, you know, she wants to take some water or grab something in the teacher's room. So the teacher is not really in, inside the process. This is what we call here focus groups. And, uh, but then again, it's not, we, we're not talking to students to evaluate the teacher. We are talking to students to check what is it that they want more. And then if we consider this, what they are evaluating is the methodology. They are evaluating uh, the way that we do things at our school, not the teacher. The teacher is the one that applies the methodology. And uh, it was so interesting because uh, we had many expectations and with our expectations were really connected to having more technology in the class. And when they came up with the ideas of having more games, more things to be done at the garden, to be done outside, uh, to be uh, doing sitting on the floor, and we were mesmerized because we, we were that sure that they would ask for more technology, for more things on the internet, for platforms or uh, gamification activities and things of the kind. And it was very, very unimportant, the amount of demands that were strictly connected to technology. Very interesting. Um, Alessandra here is, is uh, asking on YouTube if you've had time to implement any of those changes. In the, uh, in the classrooms. Yeah, you, you see, uh, this uh, pedagogical coordinator of ours, Denise Cavalli, she did this job in September. And then in, in October, we got together and I had a, a meeting with her because I was so interested in the results of the focus groups and uh, Seven São Caetano do Sul is one of the most important uh, branches from seven idiomas that we have here in the Sao Paulo area. They have over 400 students only of this age. And um, so we, in October, we talked over these things because uh, we were developing a lot, loads of materials connected to technology and looking at providers and distributors and all the people that something that had something technological to offer. And then after that, we sort of said, "Okay, stop, everybody." And now, throughout November and December, we're having groups at Seven Idiomas. We had this meeting with all the pedagogical coordinators, considering the results of this research that she carried out to make decisions. And uh, we, we, we have a shift of plans. Yes, we have to look at technology, but not for the sake of technology, but for the sake of fun enjoyment and engagement 
And this is this makes the, the challenge much more complicated. But this is what we have to face. Very interesting. I I oft I personally often see uh, many schools um, using technology as as a way to get more students because mm -hmm. at the end of the day people are interested in novelties and and everything. But uh, but it's very interesting to see that the, the students have this movement to go back to maybe activities and and resources that are not necessarily technological technology related. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what we've been learning. And uh, you see, uh, Thiago, this makes our, our reflections on our role as educators much wider because uh, we, what we've been considering uh, with our staff is that, yes, they know loads of things about technology, but there, there are many, many things about technology that we have to teach them um and uh, we are not only english teachers we are educators Absolutely. so it doesn't matter if you are an english teacher teacher at a mainstream school or if you are an english te teacher at an english institution at a language center you are an educator so yes we have to include technology because technology is part of our lives and there is a bunch of things we have to teach our students in terms of the use of it of technology itself and in terms of behavior when technology is there but on the other hand what we have to guarantee is learning and learning with this age group depends on engagement and depends on enjoyment depends on doing things which are practical which are connected to their reality and so you see it, it hasn't changed very much if we consider our the challenges we had with this age group like 20 years ago it's just that now perhaps we have something else because now we have technology as part of our lives very interesting uh, Juliana is asking us here in the comments, could you mention some of the things that you think teenagers should be taught? I think you kind of have during your presentation, but could you maybe highlight some of the yeah, most important uh, ones? Um, they, they do many, many things with the internet, with their groups, with Facebook, with Instagram. And they do things that I, I don't know, I don't have a, I don't have the clue of how to do these things, but they can teach us. And this is something really important that they have to learn. Uh, we are not the ones to be uh, demanded to have all the answers and to have all the knowledge all the time. It's okay to have moments in which they learn and moments that they teach. And uh, I guess this is one of the most important things that we have the chance of teaching our students, because this is one of the skills of the future, learning that everyone has something to teach and everyone has something to learn. So when we English teachers learn with our students how to create something amazing on Instagram, this is fine and we have to to, to make them embrace this role of teaching us or teaching a friend, because it, it varies. Some teenagers are more technological than others. So we, we, we have this job, this role of being uh, uh, promoters of this learning space in which everybody learns. And uh, um, this is something absolutely important that we teach them. And then we can teach, of course, behavior, how to be a global citizen and how to make use of technology to become a global citizen. Um, teenagers who have learned this, they have more chances of getting a scholarship to study abroad. They have more chances of making friends in other countries. 
and getting things which they would never be able to get in Brazil, and they get because they have connections. So maybe our role is to have them uh, understand that they can make use of technology so that they connect not only to the friends in the, on the neighborhood or friends from school, but friends from Japan, friends from, uh, you know, if they love rock and roll, they can connect to bands that they, they just admire or fan clubs of people who have the same interest. So yes, we have a lot of work to do and uh, we can contribute not only to the learning of English as a foreign language, but to their learning as a global citizen. And this is so important for the job of an English teacher. We, we, we are not just giving language. What we do is to give teenagers an opportunity to be a, a person, a whole person anywhere in the world. So this has to do with uh, uh, offering culture, offering the understanding that people are different, that diversity is important, that we have to uh, uh, we have to take advantage of diversity. It's wonderful that we are all different, and the technology and the internet and the web they are powerful tools. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, someone here made a comment uh, th uh, saying thanks. Thank you, Lucy. I had the chance to observe the needs for CELTA and I got great ideas for the classroom. So I'm sure Denise is a very special coordinator and teacher. Yes, for sure. Well, um, do you have any other questions? I don't think so. So, Lucia, thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank Denise Cavalli because I would never be able to produce this presentation today without her job, without her interest. Uh, she's very dedicated to teenagers and to the challenges of teaching this age group. So I thank her very much. She's one of the teacher trainers that we have for the, the, the teacher education course for teens at Seven Idiomas. So it's a, a person I respect very much. And we, we need to help each other. Absolutely. Because the challenges are endless and uh, teenagers are changing so fast. Maybe the teenagers we have uh, today will be completely different from the teenagers in five years' time. And we have to catch up because students are students and they will be students all the time. That's right. So again, Lucia, thank you very much. And uh, very soon, starting at uh, seven, we are going to have Claire Venables now talking about the little ones. Um, she's going to give us a webinar entitled Being and Belong in the Pre-Primary Classroom. So we're going to be back in 15 minutes. Thank you, Lucia, and see Bye -bye. you all in 15 minutes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.